that's one thing that stuck out to me. It was a, it was the article how Walmart automated supplier negotiations in the Harvard Business Review. Yeah, that piece uh, co-authored by the two of you, but uh, Michael Dewitt mm-hmm. is a co-author from Walmart, and Travis Johnson correct is a is a co-author. Tell us a little bit about that study, if you don't mind, because I. You know, I'm a supply chain professor, so I found it pretty interesting. So it, the technology in there is it's an AI chatbot that will over chat negotiate terms and conditions with existing suppliers of Walmart. And um, that's very counterintuitive, right? Because when people think of a procurement professional, you think of something that somebody that can do a lot and probably is really good at negotiating. Mm-hmm. Well, here's an example of don't let the buyer do that. Let the bot do it, and you can get incremental savings and, and business value. Um, that was the counterintuitive element to that. If you dig into the story, part of why this is augmentation of procurement rather than replacement of buyers is that the bot is able to target suppliers that buyers don't necessarily have sufficient time to properly negotiate with. So the truth of the matter is that when you look at a procurement organization, typically you have thousands of suppliers um, and quite a large number of those fall in what's so-called tail spent. So they are relatively small when when you look at the amount of money you spend with them, the number of transactions you have with them. And so they're not necessarily an area where professional buyers can spend a lot of time um, developing relationships and negotiating terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. What this technology does is let the bot take care of it. Let the bot take care of it so that you can negotiate with those that you normally don't have time to negotiate with. Mm. Allowing the buyer to spend more time on the things that are most important to that business. Exactly. There's two elements to what does it mean for a buyer. Number one, you can focus on more on strategy and you can focus more on critic, most critical relationships, number one. But number two, the bot doesn't – it's controlled AI. Mm-hmm. So the bot doesn't just come up with what am I going to negotiate with whom. The buyer has a key role in the, selecting the suppliers to target, um, providing data on who to approach in what way, and developing the negotiation scenarios um, as well so that the bot can then execute. Um, so it is true, a perfect example of procurement augmentation um, to make the buyer more impactful and to help procurement grow the value it's generating in key relationships as well as in the business. You know, one thing that interested me in the article was, I don't know if you use the term adoption rate from the suppliers, but um, that term I'm using, and it was really high, the number of suppliers in the in the pilot yep. that that adopted. So clearly they're seeing benefit. What, what benefit do you think the supplier is getting from this? So there's a couple of benefits. Uh, first of all, um, they are in a negotiation with Walmart. So rather than just having to accept the term and conditions that Walmart normally applies, there's an opportunity to discuss those, and there's an opportunity to make decisions, which they previously might not have had. So that's one benefit. Number two, the technology, which is Pactem, uh, that they use, allows the supplier to think, to go back. into. So there's lots of flexibility in the hands of the supplier uh, to put control over the negotiation in their hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's that's a real uh, a real benefit. The other thing, and it has to do with how Walmart approaches negotiations. If you have a deal with Walmart, you have a deal with Walmart. So the follow through on those agreements um, is very high as well, which is a real benefit to suppliers. Like a pitfall in procurement is, I negotiated with you yesterday, but today I want to talk to you a little bit further. And that's highly frustrating and can be borderline you know, unethical uh, in terms of how you approach suppliers. There's none of that in this. There's none of that is the negotiation ends with an agreement, with a commitment, a contract, crystal clear, super transparent. What's cool about Walmart and the executives that we're working with in particular is that they're really motivated to innovate and to, to, to think forward and do it collaboratively um, as well, which I think is very rare plus being able to willing to share learnings so that together we can drive a little bit of progress. Obviously, they're increasingly recognized for the innovator and the leader in this space that they, uh, that they are, and they're asked to talk a lot about some of the things that we research together um, in industry, and good for them and good for the field. Absolutely.
This one I thought was really interesting because we also look at other adopters of Pactum. So Remco just explained how Walmart is using it. But we also have a smaller company that has used it and also Maersk. So we have that story in there. Um, in there. And you're right, by the way, on Pactum, I'm helping several companies explore how can I potentially use it, which is just great in terms of how research leads to research and opportunities. Would you tell us companies. a little bit about Pactum? Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a really cool young tech uh, company that um, um, the article that, uh, that you referenced features one of the several use cases that they have and the journey of adoption has progressed, including in Walmart, into other, uh, into other use cases. And they are squarely focused on using AI to um, drive supplier interaction so that the buyer doesn't have to do it. So, um, and, and, but there is applications in logistics, uh, different industries, different markets. Uh, I'm helping several companies kind of think through how could that work for me? And so there's a lot more innovation to have there. It's really kind of cool. What is it going to mean for our students that are going into this field in terms of what their day-to-day -day will, will look like? And, um, you know, it's, it's a very, very bright future. It's, it's really, really incredible what potential it can bring for procurement specifically to grow its business contributions and to grow the coverage of spend, uh, the impact on supplier relations, on business resilience. There's a ton of potential there. And what's really, really cool is that we've been privileged to be able to work with a few innovators that are really pushing the thinking and the practice, who have generously shared with us to let us learn from them and let us together with them, um, because that piece you referenced is co-authored with Walmart executives, in fact, um, to share that uh, to advance the thinking and, and help others as well. Both in my um, master's in supply chain as well as in my EMBA class this semester, we're going to actually have the CEO and founder of Pactum come in for a session where he'll open up about the technology, but we're gonna have our master students negotiate against a bot okay. in the classroom. So we're gonna really bring that technology to life and have them uh, live it through, and I, I can't wait for that session. I hope you invite me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs>